many more iconic cars than this old girl, are there? The Land Rover, whether it's a Series 1, a Series 2 or a Defender, has been with us for over 70 years now. It's carried our farming goods, it's carried our soldiers, it's taken our children to weddings. It might actually be the most important car in British motoring history. But right now, it's probably not the most important car in Land Rover's history. There's a decent chance. Actually, it's that, the new one. Controversy stalks this car. It's just not the same. It's too modern. It's too expensive. It's too fussy. It isn't a Defender. I refuse to accept that that thing is a Defender. And those are just some of the things people said before it was launched. To be truthful, the easiest thing Land Rover could have done with a Defender was, well, move on. After so long in production, the old Defender was a legend, a hero to the masses who loved its rugged ability, its simple engineering and its style. But in 2020, there is no place for the old car. People like their cars to work on the road, even SUVs. They like them to be nailed together without panel gaps you can see through. Not to rattle so loudly they can't hear on a journey. And in general, just be a bit modern. If Land Rover were sensible, they might have just churned out some special editions, mounted a Defender to the roof of their factory in Solihull, and got on with something else. But it wasn't. No matter who owns it, in what country, Land Rover should be bold. It should be rugged. It should be able to resist whatever factors are going against it. So rather than give up, it built a new one. And here it is. Outside, it's a bit like a smoothed off version of the old car, but with some little touches added as callbacks. Like those tiny little windows on the top, the safari windows on the side, or those panels in the rear windows. Now, if I'm honest, I'm not a Defender head, Defend Easter, whatever it is they call themselves. But I quite like this, which has probably got some of you viciously unsubscribing as I speak. But one thing it is though, is big. It's just under two meters tall. It's just over two meters wide with the wing mirrors folded out. And it's five meters long with the spare tire on the back. And to put that in context, that's about the same size as the original Range Rover, but not much smaller than the new one. Now the one thing they needed to change about the new Defender, other than nailing it together so you couldn't see through the gaps was to make it drive on road. The old Defender was made to drive off road and it, it could drive on road but it wasn't very happy about it and you weren't very happy about being in it on road. The modern SUV driver wants to be able to waft around B roads. They want to be able to feel comfortable in town without worrying that the next bump in the road is going to send them into a nervous breakdown. And that means the Defender comes with optional air suspension, and that suspension is independent. The kind of thing that's thrown some people into a frothing meltdown. But is it a road car? Well, it'll quite happily trundle about these B roads with no problem at all. But it is soft as a marshmallow, and that does result in quite a lot of body roll. The kind of roll that might put someone used to a modern SUV and its firmer ride off a little bit. But I don't see it that way. I see it as bringing a bit of that old Defender character in. If you want a Land Rover that will waft you firmly to your destination, buy a Discovery. This is a Defender. The Defender is the wobbly, friendly one of the Land Rover lineup. This is a very bad analogy. But if the Range Rover Sport is the Greyhound, then this, this is the friendly, sleepy old Labrador that sat by the fire. What we haven't mentioned yet is the engine. This is the D240 spec, which is probably the one that you'll see most often in the UK. It's sort of the sweet spot in the middle of the range for the Defender. That means it's got a four-cylinder, two-litre turbocharged diesel engine, shockingly, uh, producing 240 
40 horsepower or thereabouts. Uh, more importantly, 430 newton meters of torque, which somehow means, and that doesn't sound like a massive amount, but somehow that means that it will do uh, not to 62 miles an hour in less than nine seconds, which is quite impressive at 2,200 kilograms, if I'm honest. But then the real thing this car was made for was this kind of rough stuff. It's what a Defender should be, I am glad to report to people. It is a car you can point at anything and it will traverse it you don't have to do too much to be honest yes you'll hear and you need to make sure that things are pointing in the right direction but in reality this car knows what it needs to do and if it's got a big hill it needs to get over or some really rough terrain it'll do it and it'll do it with a plum and it as it's doing it it feels like a defender i don't know how that might sound odd but it feels like it's a defender it feels like it's a really quite basic piece of kit that is just going to go over this without oodles of tech. In reality, this is a very sophisticated machine, but somehow they've engineered into it a nice, I don't know, a nice feeling of the old Defender. It's, it's repeating that feeling on the road, the sort of nice wafty wobbliness that, that makes you feel that warmness, the warmth of this is this is still a Defender underneath, it's still a Series 1, a Series 2, a, a Defender. And it's like that off-road. And, again, I like it. But one of my favorite things about the new Defender is the interior. Now when you get in here, it feels a little bit like a Lego car. Now, go with me here. It seems like a strange description, but when you get in here and you look around, it feels like almost anyone could have nailed this thing together. Now obviously they can't, but take for example the screen in the middle. Now it's a lovely thing, but it looks like you could just whip it out and take it off wherever you go. Everything here looks like it just slots together. You see, the whole interior of this car feels like a big Tonka toy, which feels me thinking, did you get a dog in this car? Yes. For us humans, the Defender is actually quite a nice place to be. There's a weird compromise with this car. It has to have all of the things that it needs to be called a Defender, but it also needs the things that you need in a modern SUV. So it's got screens everywhere, in front of me and to the side. But it's also got washable plastic mats. But it's got heated seats and storage for your drinks. But also rugged plastics that you're not worried about if you kick accidentally. In fact, some of the plastics are not completely rugged, or not anywhere near rugged enough, as far as some people are concerned. But there's cubby holes everywhere. There's a giant one here, there's one there, there's one there, there's one down here, there's one under the seat. And there's electric power points for when you need to do almost anything. There's, as well as a, there's a three pin plug in the boot. And because even people who yearn for the original Defender still need mobile phones to get around today, it's got USB sockets, both USB and USB-C, both in the back and in the front. Some people complain that these compromises are not what the Defender should be about. But that's the wrong way to look at it, really. Yes, there's, there's compromises. But that means what you get is a car that's rugged and chunky and fun. But also all the techy things we love. Okay, there's the price. The Defender is not the utilitarian workhorse of the people anymore, I'm afraid. This particular car with its Pangea green and its white roof and its keyless entry and its electric tow bar and its video rear view mirror and its off-road pack will cost you about 62,000 pounds. 
But if you lose all that, it's £52,000. But even without all those trinkets, in S trim, this is still a very well specced up car. As standard, you've got LED headlights, you've got these eight way adjustable electric seats, which are much more comfortable than the old car and are heated. You've got 360 degree parking sensors, it's five meters long, remember? And you've even got the sat nav and infotainment system. The heated steering wheel is extra, but we'll forgive them that. So what is this car? Is it a true successor to the original Defender? Or is it a travesty that should never have been allowed to roll out of Solihull? Well, in truth, it ain't either of those things. It's certainly not a travesty, but in 2020, you really cannot make a true successor to the original Defender. And I include the Ineos Grenadier in that assessment. No, this car walks a very fine tightrope between accessibility and luxury, I guess. It's true that it looks a lot better in 90 form, but even the Defender 110 is still a very, very likeable car. There's absolutely no denying that many, many people are very angry about this car. And there's not a whole lot Land Rover could do about that. Sure, they could have made a car with a ladder chassis and rigid axles, but then who would have bought it? The new Defender has its faults, but it fixes a lot of problems that normal buyers had with the old car. The only question that really remains is whether the world actually needed a modern Defender. Only time will tell.